Hello and welcome. This is going to be the first tutorial in a series that will form a little user form course. And this is going to be a pared down version of what I have in the full VBA course, which is going to be released really soon. So here's what we have in the full course, a nice little user form with some color, some inputs, and some buttons, as well as a default value. And you input some text, hit save input, and it's going to save it in the worksheet and close the user form. So here we're going to build a pared down version of that, and the full version will be in the course. And then the following tutorials will show you how to do all sorts of other really interesting things with user forms, including adding additional types of controls. Make sure to check the link in the description for the full course, and subscribe, hit the like button and the bell icon so you can get all of the new tutorials. Now I'm going to open up a new fresh workbook and we're going to start from scratch. All right, so a user form is what's going to allow us to more easily input and manage data with the worksheet and it is basically going to be built using VBA and a visual interface. So we hit Alt F11 to go to the VBA window, or you can go to the Developer tab and Visual Basic. And then instead of the usual thing of going to Insert and Module, we want to go to Insert User Form. And here, right off the bat, we have a basic user form. And we can click it and hit play or F5. And we are going to see the user form here with the default title and absolutely nothing in it. But we can still close it, so the red X is there by default. So when you're building your user form, just click it and hit the play button to test it and see how it's progressing. Now, two really important things for user forms are the toolbox right here and the properties window right here. If you don't see the toolbox, click the little button up here and it should appear or go to view and toolbox. And for the properties window, F4 or view properties window. The properties window isn't that useful for modules, but it's very useful for user forms. Now, before we do anything with our user form, I want to get you used to the concept of renaming everything in your user form, including the user form itself. When we go to code everything, we have to refer to these names. So let's change it from the generic user form one to something a little bit helpful. So let's click up here, delete this guy, give it a nice little prefix. It'll make it easier to find if we have multiple forms or multiple other types of controls easier to find when we go to code. So for the name, you want to type FRM for form, and let's just say form input. Hit enter, and you get FRM input right here. And we can go ahead and change the caption property so that we have a nice little title. How about input form? And we can run this guy and already check out some of our changes. Input form. Very nice. Now let's go ahead and add some controls. All of the controls for the form are going to be added from the toolbox. And we're going to start with a nice little label. And you can either click once, or you can click and drag to resize it. Or just click it afterwards, and then go to the corners, and you can resize whatever control you have. I'm going to click it now and hit delete to remove it. And let's go ahead and change the name for this guy to LBL title. And how about the caption to my new title and make the N capitalized. There we go. Now the properties window controls more than just the visible text and the name. We have a lot of interesting formatting options that we can access down here. For the label, let's go to the font property Click once, then a the little square to the right, and we can change the font, not too much, but a little bit. So let's make it bold and 14, hit OK, and resize this guy a little bit. Or we can go up here to Auto Size False and set that to True, and it's going to wrap it around the text that we have there, although I do not like to use that too much. So we have a nice little title. And a tip for arranging your controls is to click it, then go to Format, and you have lots of options right here. 
I'm not going to cover them too much in this, but in the full course, I do cover them in more depth because there's some interesting things you can do when you have a lot of controls on your form, and it will allow you to more easily and quickly line everything up. But here we're going to center this guy. And now let's go ahead and create a text box. So that's the input, and we will click once, and let's go ahead and drag it across. And actually, maybe let's make it a little bit smaller, and we'll go ahead and pop a label right here to the left of it. And let's name this label LBL name, and change the caption of it to name, and maybe the font we shall make bold. For the text box, for the name, let's give it a prefix of TXT and let's call it name. And there are really a lot of cool things that you can do with text boxes, but I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. I highly suggest, though, that you play around with these options. They can be very, very nice. The only one that we're going to be using here is how to get the value from the text box and put it into the worksheet. And we'll cover that a little bit later. One really helpful tip I want to tell you about now, though, is now that we have a few controls over here and we have renamed them, if we don't want to click them or we have a lot of them and it's a little bit confusing, you can click the drop down arrow at the top of the properties window and see the name for each one and exactly what it is. So TXT name is a text box. LBL name is a label, and you can click it and then change all of the properties related to that control. Now let's add the buttons to our form. So click the form, and in the toolbox go down here to Command Button, and let's click once, and let's click once more. And let's click the first one, rename that guy to CMD, cancel and go to the caption property and change that to cancel. The caption property is often used. CMD, let's call this one input. And for the caption, how about submit? And now we have a nice little form. Click play and there we go. Now you can make it look a little bit nicer and spend a lot of time on organizing and changing the font size and all of that, but we're not going to spend too much time on that here. And this is not going to look like the form that I showed you in the intro because that was the full version of it from the full course. This is just a little pared down version of it to get you started with user forms. And the next thing that you want to do is to actually get it to work. And to do that, we need to access the code. Now here we have the nice visual interface for the form. So where does the code go? Well, the code is actually sitting just behind this. So you could double click the form or you can right click the form over here and go to view code. And this is where we're going to put the code for the form. If you want to get back to the form, you can double click this guy or right click, go to view object. Now, if you double click anything in the form, what it's going to do is to take you to an event for that. So user form click, any code that we put here is going to run when we click on the user form. Now we don't really want that event, but oftentimes what you're going to want is a button click event. So let's go for the cancel button, double click that guy. And now when you click the cancel button, whatever code you have in here is going to run. And you can access all of this and all of the events up here in the drop down menus. So the left is going to have all the objects, all the controls on the user form, as well as the user form itself on the bottom. And on the right, we're going to have all of the events for the selected object. Now in the full course, I cover this in a little bit more detail, a little bit more depth. I take a little bit more time here, but I'm just going to get you to a working user form for now. So in order to close, to destroy, to completely remove the user form, all you have to do is to type unload me. Now me is a very interesting special little word. What it means here is the user form, this current user form, and that refers to FRM input. You could also replace that with the name of the form if you wanted to. So FRM control space, just to fill in the name, and that's the name of the form that we created but we're going to leave it at me. 
Now there's also some other interesting things that you can do with hiding the form and showing the form. I'm not going to cover that here. It's also a little bit confusing if you don't have a little bit of programming background, but it's very helpful and very useful in a lot of different situations. So a full course covers that a little bit more. Now let's go ahead and actually remove this guy and we want to access, I'm going to go back to this because it's easier to get the click event for the buttons or just faster. We want to run some code when the submit button is clicked. Now what do we want to do? Well all I want to do is to get a value from the text box and put it in the worksheet. How do I get the value from the text box? Type the name of the text box. I'm going to hit control space to fill in the rest of the name. If you had a lot of different text boxes, right then when you hit control space, they would appear in a drop down menu. You could click the right one. Then type dot value. That's how you get the value from text box. You can also use this to place a value into the text box. Here, all I want to do is to get that value. So, Let's go to the front of it and let's make a cell reference. We're going to make life easy here and just go for the very first worksheet and range a1.value equals that. And it is as simple as that. And you can see here why renaming is so helpful and also renaming up here. This is the name we gave that button, CMD input, CMD cancel. It makes reading your code much, much easier. And we can actually hit play from here now and run our user form. And let's go with my name. And the full version of this shows you how to have that default value of John Doe automatically placed in there when you start the form up. But here, now let's click submit. And there you go, my name in cell A1. Now we're done with the form, so hit cancel and it's gone. Now a nice little trick, if you are done with the form after you have done everything for the submit button, then how about you go ahead and put an unload me at the end right there. So you can then run the form, new name, submit, and it will close the form when it's done. And we see new name right there. Now the very last thing I'm going to show you is how to run the form actually from here. So if I hit Alt F8 right now, we can't see the form. We can't just run it. So what we do, go back to the VBA window, Alt F11, insert, module, sub, run form. And there are, once again, a couple different things we could do here. I'm going to show you the easy one for this version of the tutorial. And all we're going to do is to type the name of the form and dot show. Now we can run this macro. Let's go back to the worksheet to do it. Alt F8, run the macro. There we go. Name again, submit. And the very last thing is insert, illustrations, shapes, rounded rectangle, and type run form. Select the text, bold it, home, center that guy. And let us assign a macro. Right click, assign macro, run form. Okay, there we go. Now in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add more controls. So we'll add some option buttons, some drop down menus, and a list box and a check box. And I'm going to show you how to get the input from all of those and then put them into the worksheet. And remember, this is part of a larger course where I show you how to do more things and I go into more depth for how all of this works. So if you're interested in that, check out the link in the description of this video. And if the course isn't ready yet, it will be very soon, I promise you.